Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Myth. So, today we're going to get another fun and exciting episode for you guys this Friday because we're going to be talking about the Sega Black Belt, the also in design Sega Dreamcast variant out of North America that used a PowerPC CPU as well as 3DFX graphical chips. People have talked about the Black Belt for a very long time, what it was going to be like, but I'm here to tell you that you basically played the Black Belt more than once. It was just developed and engineered and released by a different company than Sega. This is definitely theory crafting, but I think you guys are going to have a fun time. Before you get too far involved, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. But magazines back in the day talked about the two competing designs for the actual Dreamcast, Black Belt and Dural. And we're taking a look right now at Thrill Drive running on the NWKTR Konami arcade board, which is a little bit earlier than what something like Black Belt could have become, but basically the entirety of the Black Belt design ends up in a Konami arcade board, and it's very likely because 3DFX was already developing something with this chipset in mind that it was basically pivoted over to Konami. But if we take a look at a Dreamcast here down here, you're going to see the Hitachi SH4 processor as well as that Power VR chip which is going to run all the graphics. I'm not here to say that they should have went with Black Belt versus what they went with. I'm just here to talk about the fact that it basically exists and you maybe just didn't realize it yet. But magazines back in the day could not run enough previews about Sega's upcoming hardware. I remember reading these and it was just basically a fever pitch to talk about what Dreamcast was going to become. And you will see here the magazine talks about the competing formats, the Power VR, as well as the 3DFX board because Sega had entered into contracts with both companies and basically were going to take the results of what was developed and run with it. It's not just what was the most powerful, there was also a lot of political shuffling in the background depending on who you read and who you ask whether or not Sega of Japan was ever willing to let Sega of America actually win. But if you take a look at something like Crazy Taxi here, this is obviously what we ended up with. The Power VR unit married to a Hitachi SH4. And what I'm going to show you on the Konami side of things definitely isn't as good visually, so it makes total sense that whatever was being designed in America was cancelled in favor of the Dreamcast design we got, because once you see them running side by side, you're going to understand that Sega of Japan definitely had the technically superior hardware, both on paper and in actual practice and execution when you see the visuals here. Because if you move over to Thrill Drive 2 running on the Konami Viper board, which is basically the entirety of the Black Belt design. While this is a pretty game and has its own unique flair and vibe, I would not say that it looks as good as something like the Dreamcast or the Sega Naomi, the hardware variant for arcades. Because Konami never had the most powerful hardware on the market, except for the Cobra, and in the Viper's instance, this definitely seems like Konami trying to get another arcade board onto floors without spending a fortune. And how do you do that? Well, you do that by taking a design that that already exists, hardware that is on the market, and you can pivot and use. And that is basically what the Konami Viper is. It is almost the exact same chipset that would have been in the Black Belt unit with a PowerPC processor that's a slight pivot. And I know for the most part, even the 3DFX board was supposed to get that Hitachi SH4, but its original design called for a PowerPC 603 processor, which is very similar to the PowerPC processor you have on the Konami Viper. So when we take a look at this hardware here versus what was on the black belt design, you're going to find that it's basically almost identical. Yes, the power PC is slightly newer and that means it's slightly cheaper. And you'll see here that it's an equivalent to a 3DFX Voodoo 3 Avenger. It is not the same chip you would have seen on GPUs back in the day in your computer. It is a variant model that was in design. And even though it doesn't really live up to the power VR unit in the Dreamcast, it is pretty in its own right, but it definitely has that P PC look to it versus a console design as far as the visuals are concerned. But if we actually go over to period interviews and talk about the history of the Dreamcast design, there were those two competing teams, one in America and one in Japan, and the American engineer who worked at IBM at one point in time talks about the fact that they chose the Hitachi SH4 CPU, but that originally it was supposed to be an IBM Motorola PowerPC 603E, and then Sega of Japan asked them to pivot that to the Hitachi SH4. You're also going to see it uses a custom version of the Voodoo 3 as the actual graphics processor unit within the Black Belt design. And that is exactly what you have on the Konami Viper, a custom version of the Voodoo 3 GPU, or in this instance 3D Accelerator because we weren't really at GPU territory yet. And something like Wilcat Boxing here is what Black Belt would have looked like. 
Konami basically took the entire design of Black Belt and put it in an arcade board, and Konami and Sega did have a very close relationship in this era. Now, this is definitely theory crafting, but what do you do if you've spent a lot of time and money developing a platform that never actually goes to market in Sega and 3D FX instance? Well, you can and you will shop that design around to other vendors to see if you can recoup a little bit of your money. And you'll see here the 3D FX Avenger, which is basically Voodoo 3, was released in March 1999. That means it was in development in 1997 and 1998, so it's not surprising at all that it ends up in an arcade board in 1999. Now, of course, if we take a look at something like Soul Calibur, one of the prettiest games of the Sega Dreamcast, whether we're talking about the launch or the end of the life cycle, the Voodoo 3 could not keep up with this. So I'm very happy they ended up actually canceling Black Belt and going with the final design, which is what we got with Dreamcast. Because even Code 1 Dispatch here, a fun game to play, cannot live up to the graphical standards of anything Dreamcast can do. And that was basically Konami's MO. Use something that was cheaper, that they could get on arcade floors quickly, and what do you do if you need to do something like that? You use a design that already exists that you can pivot and move over to quickly that isn't the most expensive thing in the world to make. And Konami was very used to using 3 dfx hardware because on something like the Hornet, they used a dual GPU Voodoo 2 design. You have two graphics cards in there running basically in what would amount to SLI back in the day. So Konami was very familiar with PowerPC as well as something like 3D effects. So it makes perfect sense that if that Sega design was discarded, it ends up in an arcade board down the line because basically nothing design-wise is ever 100% cancelled, it just ends up being pivoted. And if we move over to Confidential Mission, again same genre light gun game, you can see just how much more powerful the Dreamcast spec was in actual practice. Now of course I'm sure Sega's engineers and developers could have gotten a lot more out of a Voodoo 3 than Konami did because Sega's designers were always better at making games than Konami's were. So you maybe could have gotten close to this, but you wouldn't get as close as you would like because even moving back to Voodoo 2, even with a dual design, you just don't get the same graphical fidelity as something like you do on the Dreamcast. But when we talk about what was supposed to go into Black Belt, you find basically identical hardware in the Konami Viper board. And that's what I mean when I say you basically played the Sega Black Belt, you just didn't realize it. And this is not in any way, shape, or form out of character for Konami. They love taking cancelled consoles and turning them into arcade boards. We're taking a look at Evil Knight right here, running on the Konami 3DO M2 design. And that's just the thing with Konami. They were always working with different partners to help them get more arcade boards on the arcade floors. So if we take a look at something like the 3DO M2 again, you know they're familiar with the PowerPC architecture because this uses dual 602s, which was only one model away from the 603 that would have been on the black belt based upon historical interviews with people that work there. And you just have another instance of a console design ending up in a Konami arcade board that is not in any way, shape or form strange. And that's just the thing, Konami love PowerPC. There was supposed to be a PowerPC processor within the Sega Black Belt, so who would be the most likely candidate to take a power PC design and decide to release an arcade board for it after the actual Black Belt was cancelled? 100% Konami has the DNA inside of their design philosophy, both on borrowing cancelled consoles as well as using PowerPC and 3D effects chips to go ahead and actually do something like this. And that's just the fun thing about this theory crafting. We can put up all the evidence we want visually, but we just don't have the link to actually say there was an agreement in place. But Konami was very familiar with 3D effects. This is Racing Jam running on dual Voodoo 1 chips, and they work through the entire Voodoo line, having the original Voodoo on something like NWKTR. Then you have Voodoo 2 over on the Konami Hornet, and then you finally end up on the Konami Viper, which has a near identical specification to the in-designed black belt units from Sega. You have the same 3D FX processor, not the retail Voodoo 3 Avenger, but a custom design, the same that was supposed to go into black belt, and you have a slightly more modern power PC processor, which is very much in line with the 603E. So if you had gotten black belt, something like this would be the visual quality you were looking at. And that's when I say it's a good thing we actually got the Dreamcast we know, love, and remember because it just isn't up to the task of matching that Power VR hardware with the Hitachi SH4 processor. But when they talk about canceled consoles you've never played before, the Black Belt always gets mentioned, and honestly, you basically did play the thing. If you played any of the games on the Konami Viper, you have experienced the Black Belt. If you played any games on the NWKTR or the Hornet, you've experienced the generation slightly before the 
Sega Black Belt. But the Sega Black Belt was a very interesting design, and of course Sega loved to compete against themselves, blowing a ton of money and resources at the time because they just could not settle on one design. But the Sega Black Belt was a power PC based architecture with a custom Voodoo 3 design, and the Konami Viper was a power PC architecture with a custom Voodoo 3 design. They match up 99% of the way, so if you ever wondered what Black Belt was like, just go find a Konami Viper, play it, and you'll know. See you guys next time. Bye bye.